Okay, let's look at another tool. This is a more advanced tool. There's a, uh, an add-on tool called Smart Analyzer uh, that you can add to IDEA. And basically what it is is a set of uh, pre-programmed test procedures. It's very common audit test procedures that have already been programmed and scripted uh, and allow us to uh, very efficiently perform uh, very common operations. So the way we'll do this is we'll uh, call up our uh, smart analyzer and we'll have to specify some information. We'll have to tag uh, the fields to the smart analyzer routine. In some cases we may have to define some input and once it indicates here that it's green we can run that particular thing. We're going to look in this case, we're going to look for transactions posted on weekends and we're going to look for transactions with uh, rounded amounts. In other words, large sequences of zeros uh, in them. Because uh, both of those are fairly unusual in payable type transactions. Once again, back to Arizona Payments. We'll clear our criteria. And we're looking at the whole data set now. And now we'll go up here and select Smart Analyzer. And we're going to select and run. Takes it a minute to come up. Again, we're pulling up a uh, an add-on package here, and it's calculating, and we're going to focus on accounts payable. So we're going to use transactions posted on weekends. So we've got to tag our data. Okay, so it wants the posted date. So now we have a choice of invoice date or paid date. So we want the posted date. That would be the date that the uh, transaction was paid. All right, so now that's good. We can select that. And now we want the rounded number, transactions with rounded amounts. So we've got to tag the data there. It wants the uh, creditor amount. So that's our amount field. Check that. Select that. And now we're ready to run these two operations from Smart Analyzer. Select Run, and it processes the programs. It's going to actually create some new databases here for us. So here we have Operation 1052, transactions posted on weekends. So here we have four cash transactions, which are already suspicious, and they were actually paid on weekends. So uh, HMV, HV, HMV was busy working on weekends paying these four uh, invoices to somebody. And transactions with rounded numbers. Here we have a series of uh, transactions that have uh, a string of zeros at the end. You see out here 60,000, 100,000, 80,000, 190,000. And again, uh, these are some of our suspicious payees. Show me the money. Matt Cash. Here's our, here's our uh, Matt Cash and Company, 190,000. That flag right on, right on our first operation back on data visualization. We saw that one, and here it pops up again. Uh, so uh, all of these will be uh, transactions that we want to have some more look uh, uh, we want to do some more analysis of these and possibly look at the supporting records as we move through our audit. So here we go. Here's our, our uh, weekend transactions and our rounded zero transactions. So the benefits of Smart Analyzer, it gives us a, a whole bank of pre-programmed routines that accelerate our analyses and help us to find uh, interesting transactions rather quickly and efficiently. So let's recap where we are so far. Uh, data analytic results, so far, so good. We have definitely identified a whole set of transactions that we want to go in and look at the source documentation. We want to know what's going on with advanced consulting. Uh, we want to know what's going on with that whole set of uh, different cash, cash co, mat cash type transactions. So those were probably all ready to say, hey, send us the source documents. We want to see uh, what the supporting data looks like, who authorized it, what did we buy, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, we may, 
we have very likely we have some indicators of fraud there. We haven't proven fraud, but we've certainly identified a whole set of high-risk transactions that merit further scrutiny. We might want to perform some additional data analytics with IDEA. Joyce Tick popped up early in the analysis, and we, uh, we pulled out the file for WJN. We might want to look at some more of his transactions, maybe HMVs, too. That, that showed up at the end. Uh, so we might want to do some more data analytics to look for uh, flags uh, in, in the data sets uh, for those particular, in that case, the Joyce Tick payee or the uh, WJN authorization. There are a lot of other useful unit operations that are available to us uh, as we audit. Uh, append databases is good. In some cases, uh, you may want to extract out uh, a series of databases. Let's say you want to extract out data for a series of vendors and then join them into one database. So the append function allows you to take several of your databases and join them into one database uh, for other analysis. The top records function, it, it can be handy, particularly if you're doing like expense reports. Uh, so one thing I frequently look at is I'll dump a year's worth of expense reports and then just say, give me the top 10 uh, on basis of total amount. Uh, that's always pretty interesting. You can do uh, sound X matches using your criteria. Uh, that way you can find text fields that while they may not be exactly spelled the same, uh, would sound the same. Uh, again, so similar to your fudge the fuzzy logic uh, type analysis. Uh, there's aging function. Uh, there's sampling function. You can do attribute sampling, variable sampling, and monetary unit sampling. It'll uh, calculate your sample sizes and actually select uh, random samples for you to use uh, if you have the need for sampling. Uh, statistics. Uh, we can do additional statistics. We can also use outside uh, statistics package, uh, such as Minitab, uh, to do further analysis. We can take uh, one of our data sets, export it to Excel, pull it into Minitab, and use it. And uh, we already looked at joins. Uh, that, that's pretty handy. Uh, Benford's Law is a statistical technique uh, that looks at the probability, the sequence of numbers. That could be a whole session in itself, uh, but uh, it is programmed into IDEA and can be performed rather readily if you have the need for that particular tool. Okay, let's look at some other features that are available. We've, we've kind of uh, looked at the main unit operations that we can build analyses out of, but let's look at a couple other features. And, and uh, uh, two we're going to look at are the history and the project overview. One of the uh, great things about IDEA is it maintains a complete audit trail. Uh, I'm sure you noticed that as we went through the analysis, we were creating these databases over here in the file explorer. We started from a blank slate here, and now have a whole set of databases uh, that have uh, various extracts out of our analysis. But when we select the history for any of these databases, uh, we get this presentation. It shows the exact history of how that database was, corrected, was created from the time it was imported all the way up to the last operation that produced it. Uh, we have information on the, uh, uh, the last operation as well as all the operations in the full analysis available to us. So let's take a look at that. Let's look at our vendor summary. So we go over here to the property side and we select history and we get this presentation. Now, as I said, uh, this shows the original import of his Arizona payments and then all the analyses that, that were performed that led to the final form of this database. And here's the summarization operation and here we have uh, the idea script uh, that would actually repeat that particular operation. The next feature we'll look at is the project overview. And the project overview can also be used to create idea script just like history can. We go to the home tab, we select project overview. And it processes. And here we have a graphical depiction of the entire project up to date. Uh, here's our import from Excel and all the different operations we did. And notice there's a couple in red. These are actually uh, databases that uh, I created along the way and deleted that you didn't see. Uh, but they're still preserved uh, in the record of the audit. And here's the uh, approved vendor list we imported. Here's where it joined up. Here's where we did some fuzzy duplicates. 
So we can actually go through here and we can, uh, uh, we can create an idea script to uh, uh, reproduce uh, all or any part uh, that we want to of this operation. So for instance, uh, if we wanted to create an idea script, we would click correct ma create macro, we'll select idea script. Now we see our project, but it's, uh, it's grayed out. But as we select these, um, these different operations, um, they they highlight and and these this is what we these ones that are they're highlighted will be included in our idea script. So here what we could do let's suppose that we got a, a new approved vendor list that the supplier quality said wait a minute we sent you an old list here's a new list we want to repeat this we can actually repeat that whole operation up through the join database uh, with an idea script. So we selected all the operations that produce the join database we select finish. And it says here the idea script will be generated when the project overview window is closed. So we close project overview and here's our idea script. This is a, uh, this is a script for that entire operation. So if we wanted to go back with a new file and uh, recreate that, we could use this to import uh, two files and join them together to produce unapproved vendors uh, simply by pressing the, uh, the run operation at this point. And we can save these. Again, we have a, we have a folder called macros for saving this. So we'll say, we'll call this import and join. And now we've saved that script for future use, either in this audit or in another audit. So let's review the benefits of history and project overview. These allow us to visualize our project and they also allow us to easily create idea scripts either for a single operation or for the entire analysis or a major subset of our analysis. So let's take a look at how we can use an idea script uh, in our audit. And we're going to create this idea script. What we're going to do is we're going to extract uh, the uh, records for three different vendors using idea script. So let's show how that would work. We'll go back, we're in our original data set and we perform the operation the first time. We're going to select vendor equals and we're going to select M027 which is our old friend Joyce Tick. We have a valid equation. We've selected those and we're going to direct extract that into a data set and we're going to call it M027. All right, so now we have this. Now suppose we wanted to do that same operation for a couple of other vendors. Well, we could, we could simply go through and, and repeat the criteria, but uh, in this case, we're going to use the uh, record, the idea script for the record extraction. So we'll take, we'll copy the idea script for the selected task, record extraction. We'll create this, we'll save it. We'll call it vendor extraction. We'll save it for future use. And all we really have to do here is we can use a global find and replace. So we'll replace M027, the vendor number for Joyce Tick, with M100 for Crooks Incorporated. And we'll just tell it to replace all. And so we can look here real quickly that every place that it, we used M0127, we have a new database name going to be M100. And for the criteria, it's going to select vendor equals M100. So it's changed every place there was an M0027 with M100. Now we can run that. And now we have uh, all the M100, Crooks Incorporated, Cash Only, all those types of things. And it has created a new file. 
we'll refresh here, called M100 with those five transactions. Now let's suppose we want to do that again. We just call up our idea script. We select replace. This time we're going to replace M100 with W007, which is I am a crook. Place all. Now you have W007, vendor equal W007, looks good. Select run. And now we have, wow, look at all those. Not only I'm a crook, but we get uh, Trevor Willis and Cash and Go and all kinds of different things. Once again, we refresh. And W007 appears down here because it's alphabetically. Uh, but there's those 28 transactions. So that's a way that we can use. Um, we can use IdeaScript to very quickly uh, perform repeated operations within an audit. So, benefits of IdeaScripts. It allows us to easily develop and reuse complex scripts. Again, we can do uh, scripts within an audit to do something you of uh, selecting a vendor over and over again. Another thing you could do is if you have a certain operation you're using, let's say, say quarterly, you want to review uh, the general lever ledger and perform a series of operations, those can actually be programmed and can allow you to do continuous auditing or even uh, to uh, uh, allow management to do continuous monitoring of uh, data that uh, they want to look at, say, every quarter or uh, every month. So let, to wrap it up, some conclusions. First of all, sampling is not always sufficient. If we selected a sample of 20 out of that data set, it's very unlikely that we'd have, we'd have seen uh, all the uh, uh, rich red flags that were within this sample data set that we use. So sometimes you need to use big data. Sometimes you need to work with the entire population in order to find uh, the exceptions and, and the patterns that point to high-risk transactions. Another conclusion is we can take very simple unit operations, summarization, sorting, extracting, importing, and we can create rather complex analysis simply by piecing them together step by step in a logical manner. And it's not important that you follow a certain sequence of steps. As we showed you with the auth, we could, we could get there through visualize, we could have used summarization. So you can get to the same conclusions by different paths. Uh, so the sequence of unit operations isn't always uh, critical uh, to performing uh, these types of data analytics. Some of the advantages of using IDEA is it accelerates our time to insights. Data in visualization, which is built in, gives us a quick overview. We can import data uh, from many different formats uh, depending on, on what our source is. We get one-click access to common operations that we can again build into complex analyses. We have access to packaged smart analyzer scripts. We have a full audit trail. No data are destroyed. We have a full audit trail, not only of, of uh, databases we create along the way, but uh, the, uh, uh, the history. And we have data integrity. We, we know that uh, by comparing record counts and control totals, we can assure that our data integrity is maintained throughout the audit sequence. So a final disclaimer and acknowledgement. Uh, I didn't get any compensation or benefit from this. Idea is the uh, software that we selected to use at Elbit Systems of America. I also want to thank uh, Carolyn Newman, Sarah Palumbo, and Scott Smith at Automation in Houston, Texas, because they provided quite a bit of assistance to me uh, in developing this presentation.